Hello beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. <sighs> A lot has actually changed since my last uh, video. I moved two times and this time I'm living about an hour from where I was last time, uh, closer to the beach which is absolutely beautiful and yeah but just as a result of the moving or the moving in such a short space of time i've been having less space or less inspiration i guess to uh, create music and i finally feel settled i'm in a beautiful location and i feel called to uh, expressing myself in this way again plus i feel like it almost has become a ritual that whenever i move apartments i love to test out the acoustics so that's what we'll be doing today I'll just be going through some of the basic vowel sounds that I usually do and a few little tips if I feel um, anything comes up along the way and I would love to know down below how your practice has been going, things that you've explored and ways you have been expressing yourself. Even though I haven't been doing music as much, I've been getting into hip hop dancing so once a week I do a hip hop dance class and from tonight I'll be starting a six-week belly dance course, which I'm very excited about. And who knows, maybe I can combine the polyphonics with the belly dance at some point. Let me know if you'd like to see that. Anyways, let's get into the video. I'll probably sit up on the table to uh, do the polyphonics, but yes. All right, so before I pop into some of my practice and just testing out the new acoustics, I wanted to answer a few questions that I received in the comment section, which more or less have been asked a few times, so some of them um, I'm just going to cover today. The first one was, do you exhale the whole way and then do the N sound? So the fundamental is the one that sustains throughout, and N is just a simple way in which we can connect to our abdomen and our diaphragm and try to elongate that for as long as possible. And of course, you don't want to be forcing it and in pain when you're doing it, but just a little practice every single day can be a way to sustain it and time yourself. But to actually answer the question, yes, the way that I was taught was always to, you know, sit up straight and doing a full inhale through the belly. Full exhale. And then begin. The next question was, when you say more, do you change the sound at the end or stick to the R sound? Simply put, I just break it down to M, so M, O, like O, like O H, O. Oh. Then R, so instead of growling like grr, it's just er. And then from that I transition to the vowel, to the E. So it would be something like this. Once I go from M to the O to the R to the E, I then sort of oscillate between the E and the R and you can have fun going back and forth between those. The next question, does this work for guys as well as girls? It works for everyone. I personally prefer the sound of a lower voice um, when it comes to throat singing. That's just me. and I. Also, I never mastered the technique of throat singing. I didn't really try, but the overtone appealed to me because it sounded a little bit more subtle, a little bit softer, less strain involved. And yeah, but I actually have more male friends that tend to do overtone singing, but you know, female, male, whenever I share it with my friends, anybody can do it with enough practice and presence. All right, next question. I squeezed my nose and the sound stopped. Am I doing something wrong? This is in regards, I'm pretty sure, to my last video that I did a few months ago because I was looking up different techniques to try. And one was it, sorry, one of them was just whereabouts you're producing the sound from. And one of the tips was to block, like, pinch your nose 
And if the sound stops, then you're probably singing more from the nasal cavity as opposed to dropping down into the body, into the diaphragm. So it's just a nice way to be able to check with yourself. So to test this, just produce the vowel sound. So let's say we do E to U or just U and pinch your nose and see if the sound stops then potentially redirect your focus down lower in your body. And if it doesn't stop, then it sounds like you have more of a resonant sound. How do you get it to be loud and clear? It's probably not that loud and clear at the moment. I'm actually a bit, I have a bit of a cold and I have not been practicing. So two tips there. One, don't be clogged up to practice and I'm a big fan of micro practicing instead of saying I'm gonna do half an hour twice a week no do five minutes three minutes every single day uh, this third one is to experiment I'm a big fan of just being silly trying different sounds trying different ways of moving your lips and your tongue applying different pressures seeing where you can sort of engage in your body to help facilitate the sound it's called practicing for a reason. If you're performing, that's different. But if you're practicing, that's when you're meant to explore and be silly. The fourth one is experimenting in different environments. I think in a previous video in my last apartment, I just went around to different rooms and tried to see if the quality of the sound changed. I've also done it in other videos where I'll be in the bathroom, I'll go through a hallway, I'll go outside, the bedroom, the car. All of these spaces can produce a completely different quality of sound and might help filter through the overtone. The fifth tip that I believe helps is ear cupping. So when you're doing the polyphonic, when you're making your sound, cup your ears like that and it feels a bit more hollow or resonant. I don't know exactly how to explain it. It's almost like creating your own ear cave. I find that helps. And lastly, introducing background noise. That's another thing I'm a really big fan of. I think one of my favorite places to practice is in the car. You're still able to hear the slight sound of the cars whooshing by. You can also put on some music in the car or the aircon and that really helps. Same with inside, I've got a fan on at the moment. Even if you're putting on your washing machine, that could be a good time to practice. And lastly, best nature spots to practice. I love finding caves. I love finding forests because you get the breeze that shakes the trees ever so slightly. Uh, the wind goes in between the trees and also waterfalls. I absolutely love uh, waterfalls that can be pretty magical if you get the right, the right spot to practice your polyphonic. Let me know if those answers were helpful at all and be sure to leave any other questions you have below. I will aim to intermittently answer questions that I think could benefit uh, our community. So I'm just going to get into some short practice now. Yeah, I might leave it here actually. I think I need to rest my throat. But I would love to hear how your practice is going, as I mentioned before, down below. Any questions you might have, down below. And I intend to share some of the beautiful natural surroundings of where I'm based now and to 
do snippets of polyphonic in those new environments to explore and share this beautiful part of the world with you guys. Alright, so I'm sending all my love and talk soon.